Happy Friday, friends, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting July 14th, 2014. The first of our three stories is Oracle Patch Day. Oracle only releases patches on a quarterly cycle, so whenever they do, it's quite a few patches. Uh, this month was no different. Oracle released patches for many, many, many products, and they fixed 113 vulnerabilities. The biggest patch for most people is probably Java. Almost everyone has Java, and their patch fixes 20 security vulnerabilities that allow remote attackers to execute code, usually in drive-by download attacks. So go get the Java patch. But there's also patches for a lot of other stuff. The MySQL patch also fixed 10 vulnerabilities, and there's about 29 vulnerabilities fixed in multiple uh, middleware uh, packages that Oracle uses. So if you're an Oracle administrator, be sure to check out the Oracle Critical Patch Update, which I'll link to in our blog, and get the updates for any products you have. Next up is a story on how Google wants to save the internet. This week we heard that Google launched Project Zero, and I just wanted to comment on this project because I really like it. Essentially, Google is organizing a team of bug finders, security researchers that find zero-day vulnerabilities in products, and they're getting this team to find vulnerabilities in the most popular internet products, not just their own, but things like Internet Explorer, of course, Chrome, and, and things like OpenSSL and other products that you use when you're using the internet. And the whole point of this team is to try to find those vulnerabilities by good guys so that they can help vendors fix them to get them more secure for all the citizens of the internet. Now I really like this project. In the past I've commented on a different type of vulnerability research. There's a lot of organizations that I personally think are kind of black hat. Organizations like VUPIN, uh, which is an organization that finds zero-day vulnerabilities but they do not tell the vendor they sell the vulnerabilities, the zero-day vulnerabilities, to the highest bidder, probably allowing attackers and nation states to weaponize these flaws instead of fixing them for the citizens of the internet. So I think it's a really good idea for good guys to try to fix these vulnerabilities for us and make everyone safe. So it's kind of an interesting project, Project Zero, and I just wanted to comment on it. If you wanted to learn more about it, be sure to check our link, which will be in the blog post associated with this video. So for the final topic for my three stories, I'm going to cover passwords. And I'm kind of cheating here because for this password story, I'm actually combining three related stories or semi-related stories. The first of the bunch is during the week, a researchers announced that they had discovered a number of vulnerabilities in password managers. Now I often recommend password managers as a good password practice. These are th places where you can store all your different passwords in one location, encrypted of course, and that way you can use strong passwords without having to remember them. In any case, UC Berkeley reported some research where they found many vulnerabilities in five different password managers, including one I've used in the past called LastPass. And the LastPass vulnerability was pretty big. Essentially, it allowed internet-based attackers to gain clear text passwords for different sites you might visit. So some pretty big vulnerabilities in password managers. In any case, I still really like password managers, but it's good to make sure that there are no vulnerabilities in your password manager, so you always want to keep it patched and up to date. Now, talking about password managers, also during the week, Microsoft's tech security blog reported interesting research saying that perhaps it might be a good idea to use weak passwords. Essentially, their theory was this. First, they say that password managers, while good, are not perfect. Uh, they point out that when you're using password uh, managers, you put all your eggs in one basket. So even though your passwords are all encrypted, if bad guys can get your master password, maybe by key logging, they now have have the keys to your entire kingdom. And this is true, although if you protect your password manager, it's quite unlikely. So their recommendation is you should only use strong passwords for really important sites where you store critical information, like say Amazon or Apple or Gmail or, or any place you do online banking or shopping. There you should use a very, very strong password. 
But on all the other sites you visit, like if you go to a forum site where you just want to reply to someone but you don't plan on using the site very often, maybe you can just use a weak throwaway password and you use that weak password at every single site that you really don't care about, where you don't store any personal detail. And frankly, this is something I actually already do just by habit. You know, if I'm not really going to visit a forum, if I just want to reply to something and I'm not putting a lot of my credentials or my credit card on the site, I often don't even bother putting it in my password manager, I just use a throwaway password. So this is interesting research and Microsoft's study actually has a lot of mathematics proving on how this works. But the truth is there's so many websites we visit that do have sensitive information, Facebook, Gmail, Amazon, Netflix, any place you put financial information, that's still a lot of strong passwords that you need to remember. And I don't think many users can remember up to 10 or 12 strong passwords without a a little help. So personally, I still think password managers are necessary. In any case, it is interesting research by Microsoft. Now be sure to link it in the blog post with this video. Now finally, while we're talking about passwords, password managers, and Microsoft, during the week a security organization that makes an Active Directory security product reported yet another uh, twist on the pass the hash vulnerability. Now you might have heard of pass the hash. Windows's original passwords, which were NTLAN manager or NTLM passwords have suffered a weakness forever where if an inside attacker, someone on your network, can sniff the NTLM hash that goes over the network, he can then replay that hash and log in as you. This vulnerability has existed forever. Bad guys and good guys have known about it. And there's really not much Microsoft can do to fix this old authentication mechanism because they've since moved to Kerberos. All new Windows servers use Kerberos. And if you switch to Kerberos, you shouldn't have to worry about the NTLM problem. However, the issue is a lot of old versions of Windows still use NTLM. So a lot of Windows administrators have to keep it around just for legacy issues. So past the hash is still kind of a problem. Problem. Anyways, the security organization reported yet another twist. Even if you're using Kerberos passwords, if a bad guy can get your NTLM hash, he can still use a trick to force Kerberos to downgrade to NTLM. Essentially, Kerberos uses the RC4 encryption protocol Apparently, this allows Active Directory to use NTLM with RC4. So essentially, it's just another way bad guys can use NTLM past the hash in an Active Directory network, even if it's using Kerberos. Now, whether or not this is really new is kind of up in the air. A lot of people have seen this attack before. I think Metasploit uses it. So it's not a, a huge deal. And there's really not a whole lot Microsoft can do to fix this. NTLM is here to stay, and that's why they recommend you move to Kerberos, but there's not much much they can do to change the Kerberos standard. So this is not a huge deal. It still requires an inside attacker to get your NTLM hash in the first place. Nonetheless, it's something to think about. So that's the password stories. You should patch your password managers. Perhaps you can start using bad passwords on crappy sites that you don't visit. And finally, be careful with Active Directory NTLM passwords. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it fun and maybe a bit educational. As always, there's a ton of other security stories, including more news on how Russians hacked NASDAQ a few years ago. Be sure to check them out on the WatchGuard Security Center blog, where you can find this post and many other security posts I put throughout the months and weeks. So go check it out. Finally, follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. And follow our company, WatchGuard, at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.